Hey, it's Joel. Hey, you know that contest? That contest to design the spool holder for this thing, it's still going. It just started. I was, uh, I was on a little bit of vacation when it started and there was a whole bunch of comments left on the video. I figured this would be a really good chance to address the questions that are pertinent to the contest at hand. Let's get to it. Okay, first we've got a skewed view 3D asking, can we get to distances between the shelves from top to bottom as well, please, Joel? Yes, you can. Here we go. The distance between the shelves, top to bottom. Um, it looks like 23 and 3 8 inches. 23 and 3 8 inches. You can use Google to do the conversion to real, actual world units if you want. <laughs> 23 and 3 8 I hope that's what you mean, a skewed view 3D. Uh, let's see. The distance between. I mean... The distance, can we get distances between the shelves from top to bottom? Oh, you might mean, you might mean this. You might mean this. So it is nine and a half inches and it is nine and almost a half inches, almost. Nine and a half inches, roughly, but it's wood. So if it needs to be nine and a half inches, you're darn tootin' I can make it nine and a half inches. CRT asks, as soon as I watch this, 100 ideas start spinning in my head. Competitions are in, and design are dangerously addictive to me. It's a smiley face, but it's lowercase p, so it's like it's sticking its tongue out like meh, and it's like, okay, but hey, CRT, that's great. And that was the purpose behind this, is to kind of kind of get those creative juices flowing and to just get people who may not normally enter design competitions to, to give it a shot. That's the idea. Of course, this is your crack, and so good for you. Hmm. Teresa says, ooh, that purple filament. Do want, but shipping Tim Tams costs more than the Tim Tams. And it's true, Teresa's down in the land down under, and Tim Tams are a very tasty treat that, that uh, they, they have down there, and I think in other various places. We have some here in the US, but I don't think they're made with the same chocolate, so they're not as good. But it's widely regarded as being criminally expensive to ship anything to or fro Australia. That's where her Tim Tams uh, comment came from. But um, any of those filaments back there, shipping that to Australia, I would probably have to saw off a limb and sell it on the black market to get to her, which I'm not necessarily totally opposed to, but I do need my limbs. A user by the name of Strangely My Comments Usually Get Quite Popular says, Ugh, I have what I think is a great idea, but my computer isn't working properly, and so I can't really design it. Also, my idea will include multiple parts that move with springs and bearings involved, and I don't know if that's within the rules, if there are rules. There are rules, and that is within the rules. However, it doesn't guarantee that I will pick your drawing, or I'm sorry, not your drawing, pick your model, pick your spool holder, pick your design, and it doesn't mean that it's going to be easier for you to enter or you're going to get a leg up because it's more complex or involves outside things that aren't 3D printed, but it's well within the rules and I highly suggest for you to design something awesome. Sly25 says, doesn't filament go bad in open air? You know, <laughs> once I did this video, uh, lots and lots of people said, I've always thought that if you don't bag filament or keep it in desiccant or or just leave it out in the open, it goes bad. And that's, that's a myth. Mm, maybe it's not a myth, but filament itself can be, the quality can degrade based on the moisture it absorbs. So filaments can be hygroscopic, which means they absorb moisture from the air, I think. And certain filaments can absorb more oyster, more, more oyster, more moisture from the air faster. So nylons, PETGs, uh, flexible materials, all of those are going to just wick moisture right from the air and make your printing experience with them horrible unless you dry them. However, ABSs, PLAs, yeah, those are usually those are usually just fine. Um, it's also going to depend on your locale and your environment and where your geography puts you. Because here in the state of Washington, our house is actually climate controlled. I maintain a relative humidity inside the house between 35 and 45 percent. Uh, and I have a print dry from Matter Hackers. I have a food dehydrator, which I've repurposed. I have an oven 
It's summer, we have sun. There are many ways for me to dry the TPUs, TPEs, the nylons, and the PETG, so I'm not too worried about it. And regardless, I've had filament spools open for years and they've printed just fine. So it's not generally a concern of mine, but it does mean that it may be a concern of yours. My buddy Cyber Reef Guru does say, hey Joel, great contest. Thank you, my good friend. You said the boards are 0.75 inches by 1.5 inches, but the drawing shows 18 millimeters on the bracket where the board goes, which is 0.708 inches. Can you confirm the dimensions of the boards or the slot where the board goes? Thanks. Yes, I can, and I'm really sorry about that. So in the sketch for the brackets, I did list the space where the boards go as 18 millimeters, and the dimensions I gave for the boards are one and a half by 0.75 inches. 0.75 inches becomes 0.708 inches, or point zero, point, I'm sorry, 18 millimeters becomes 0.708 inches, which is less. And so what I did is I took an average measurement of the boards and in millimeters uh, and, and across the length, which ended up being, well, it was 12 feet, including those, it was between, it was between 17.25 and 18.45. There was variance there. And so I just picked 18 thinking that if it was smaller, the board was smaller, it still fit. And if it was slightly larger than the the wood is soft and it can be pushed into the PLA plastic or the PTG plastic or the whatever plastic I put up there and fit just fine. And that seemed to work just fine. But the, the, the three quarter inch measurement for that board, unfortunately, because American sizes of this lumber isn't exact, but 18 millimeters worked great on all of it. I hope that makes sense. Someone by the name of uh, Agapios Agapiu. I hope I got that name right. Hi, Joel, nice contest I would like to involve, but I, we need more info. What are wall dimensions and how far from each printer do you want to get filament? That's a really good question. Wall dimensions, I don't know. I don't know what you mean by that. I don't know what you mean by wall dimensions. The wall, I mean, here's the, here's the ceiling right there. So it's, it's seven and a half feet tall wall. It's at 90 degrees from the floor and the ceiling. I don't know. Uh, how far from each printer do you want to get filament? Well, the idea being if the printers are along here, then ideally a filament spool holder could sit between one and two or between two and three or hanging off of two or hanging off of three or even hanging off of one. Uh, I'm not really picky about that. I'm not really picky. If it needs to come down a long way, that's okay. Greg Atlas says, I'm totally going to do this. I was actually rolling around ideas in my mind since your last video. Now to bust out my ancient 3DS Max 2008 edition, or maybe finally getting Fusion 360. I highly suggest you try it in, in, your, in your outdated version of 3DS Max, which is fantastic. But Fusion is free for uh, most people. Uh, there's Onshape, there's SolidWorks, there's Tinkercad, there's Matter Controls uh, primitives in the new Matter Control 2.0. You do have a lot of options. Try it in multiples, see what happens. Oh, and Greg says, edit, what are the dimensions of your largest filament spools? Um, uh, that's a good question. So I, because I don't envision people are going to make enclosures around it, I don't think that largest filament spools are really gonna come into play uh, unless you're talking about something like, like this, like this. This is a giant spool of, of high five blue. And if, if I was to take one of these, let's see, how about this one? If I was to take this spool and put it right up to there, I don't know if you can see that. So that's about how much bigger it is. Uh, I don't know, I don't have many of these and I would imagine if I used a lot of these for any of these machines, I would most likely come up with a different scenario. So let's let's make sure these are taken care of, the standard size spools. Let's not worry about the, the five kilogram spools. I think I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. Sean Connolly, my brother from another mother, and my editor here. Cross-country road trip to unload the filament. <laughs> For all that giveaway filaments. Uh, Sean, I'll save you some, I promise. Mr. JC, boycotting until you finish painting your walls. I get it, I get it, because, because this is just horrible, right? This is terrible. 
the idea is I don't want to finish painting it. Here's what I want to do. I want to use the printer belt to make crown molding, 3D printed crown molding that I want to put up. That's my goal. I've got the printer belt. I just need to put it together. It's in line with a bunch of other stuff. I want to put it together and make 3D printed crown molding. Undead Myth says, can we upload multiple designs? I don't know. If my mini factory allows it, then absolutely. Alias? A-E-L-E-A-S, Alias? Is this explicitly printed only or are bearing inserts allowed? Anything goes with this. Uh, but making it more complex, like I said earlier, doesn't necessarily guarantee it's going to get printed or chosen or win. Plus, you have to understand where you're at. If you can get things that I cannot get, then it's going to be hard for me to get the things you need me to get for the, the model that you designed. So uh, bearings are all good. Put whatever you want in there, but it doesn't guarantee anything. I just need to make sure you know that. Hannah Craig says, hey, Joel. Hey, Hannah. I don't know if you're still reading the comments, but I was wondering how wide the brackets are. Like when you extrude from that sketch, how far do you extrude? This sounds super cool. And it's been so long since I made anything in Fusion 360. Can't wait to get started. Well, Hannah, let's go find out. Hey, you want to know how, uh, how much I extruded these, how thick they were. So let's go into Fusion 360. Let's right click here, go edit feature. And it shows us 12.5 millimeters. And I believe I did that thinking that 12.5 millimeters is essentially half an inch because, you know, I'm here in the US and so inches. So 12.5 millimeters. Nate Wilking says for the filament distribution, you could always do a request form either for people entering the community or maker spaces. And I really like that idea. I was trying to think of someone actually mentioned uh, nominating people, nominating people for for these spare rolls of filament. Like I said in the video, I have maker spaces that are close by that I can donate to. I have schools that I can donate to. And I've got Claire from Make It and Fake It. Her lab wanted some, or the lab where she used to work. She can have some of the spools, but uh, I don't know. I think that's an interesting idea because if someone gets enough nominations, then I could just package some up and give it to them. And then, you know, that's actually a really good idea because if, if the community nominates someone enough or someone gets enough community nominations, maybe other manufacturers of filament would get in on that and maybe we could do, maybe there'd be like a monthly thing, a monthly pay it forward of filament to, to nominated people. I don't know, that's an interesting idea. I'll explore that. Robbie says, Joel, can you please provide the measurement from the bottom of the middle one by two to the top of the lower one by two, thanks. You got it. Okay, Robbie, from the bottom of the middle to the top of this one, I believe is what you said. So let's do it in a couple different places. Right here, it is nine and four, five, six, seven sixteenths. <laughs> oh, you guys are making fun of me, aren't you? And over here, it's nine and nine and three eighths. So it's roughly between nine and a quarter and nine and a half inches, roughly. Uh, the boards aren't exact, so uh, somewhere in there. If, there if, you, if you need a specific measurement, you can always, I, I can try to get it for you, but, um, but yeah, but it's wood. Like I said, it's wood. We could, we could, we could modify it. We can use things like sandpaper, sandpaper. Comma 1981, you forgot to mention on shape, it totally rules. It does, I've heard, totally rule. I've never used it, but if you're familiar with how SolidWorks does its UI and UX, then I believe you would do well in on shape. That's what I've heard. Bruce Anderson, just an idea. Donate the filament to Seattle Aquarium to floss whale teeth. <laughs> oh, Bruce you well there we go there's an update to the contest uh, it's good to be back home uh it's good to start making some more content let's get it going uh best of luck let me know if you have any more questions i'll do my best to answer them and don't forget to hug each other more because i love you guys as always high five